Okay, so as we planned, uh, let's uh, see some uh, details about the JSX syntax, since we need to be very fluent with that. Uh, we already understood that it's just a, a shortcut syntax that is translated uh, uh, automatically from uh, uh, an HTML-like syntax into the a set of function calls that will create uh, the actual uh, React elements. No? That may be a basic reference to the DOM elements or uh, generic uh, um, React components. Okay? And every element is made also always of three different parts. We have uh, the element type, the component name. We have uh, the properties, which are one or more, zero or more properties. And we have the children, which is everything inside uh, the component itself. All this information is available in the component code, of course, in the component function. The properties are in, um, uh, and uh, inside the props uh, and the children inside the special property, which, called pro which is called props to children. Okay? And all this is translated automatically in this way. Um, and the translation process is repeated until only HTML is left. Okay, so if we have a component that we render using other components, uh, then React will call the, fun the render function for those components uh, until uh, all the nodes in the tree are just pure HTML nodes. These are all automatic. Okay. Um, React will ask every component to render itself, uh, and if the, if the rendering of the component will contain other components, uh, these other components will be asked to render themselves and so on. They are not directly function calls. We are not we are not call calling the functions. Okay, uh, the my button com uh, component doesn't translate into calling the my button function. It translates into creating a tree that describes how the components are nested. Then the, the actual function will be called by React according to its own logic. We are never calling any of these functions directly. Um, the JSX syntax may be used anywhere. Normally, we use it in the return statement uh, of a component function, but we may also use it for storing some data into an array or into a, it just creates an object. So imagine that as a, an alternative syntax for creating objects. Instead of creating an object with the braces, you are creating it with JSX text. Of course, these objects will be of type. Uh, React element, uh, but then there are normal objects. You can store them into lists. Uh, you can uh, pass them around as parameters, uh, whatever you want. Uh, it's just uh, an, uh, another uh, you, one more one more syntax for creating objects. Um, the syntax is a bit more rigid than uh, the normal HTML syntax. Uh, first of all, every tag must be closed either with a closing tag or with a slash in the, in the, in the only, um, in the one and only opening tag. Um, so there is no automatic closing like we have for uh, HTML tags. Um, when we are calling a component, uh, the name of this component uh, should be known in the context in which we are, it's compiled. This means that we need to add the import statements for all the components we know. And these this component names, of course, should be exported by some library, uh, either a local library or a, a, a dependency that we, are, we have imported. Uh, we already saw that uh, um, we can pass some attributes. So we pass the name of an attribute. Attribute may be of two, of two types. They may be um, strings or expressions. So if I, if I want to pass when I cre I'm loading uh, a component uh, like I did before with the buttons, close it, uh, for example, in the app, uh, I set some property with a string value. Okay? Or I can set a property using an expression 
in braces, for example, like this. So in both cases, both uh, uh, values will be translated into the values of an object with the attribute name as the key of the object and the attribute value as the value of the object. All of these attributes will be put together into the props object. So props will always, con will always contain an object with many keys uh, that correspond to the different properties, of, uh, the different attributes that have been set to the component when it was called, and a set of values that we may set here. Always use strings uh, or braces. You cannot use a uh, two outside of braces, for example. It would be a, a syntax error. Strings or expressions. An expression will be translated as JavaScript values. Hmm? Uh, inside these braces, you can write any JavaScript expression at all. It's a normal JavaScript expression field. The children are instead the, the, the content between the opening and the closing tag. Children may contain pure text. Children may contain other components or any other you know, HTML or uh, React component. Inside the children, we may also use JavaScript expressions, again, with the braces. So the braces for inserting JavaScript exception may be used both when setting attributes and when setting the children. Like we did here, with the button, component, we have the children, which is in this case is just a string, we don't have any further components, but uh, the content of the string is being computed by a JavaScript expression. So in this case, we have some a JavaScript function that contains or computes a JSX expression that contains inside some JavaScript code that computes and returns a value. We are nesting JavaScript inside JSX inside JavaScript. We can do this even at more at deeper levels. So for example, uh, this is an example of a menu where we want to render a different menu according to whether the, the, the user is logged in or not. So in this component, we, we would uh, compute and return a JavaScript expression, uh, sorry, a JSX expression, UL, that contains uh, some JavaScript expression. In this case, we are using the ternary operator, okay? That most of your life, you have been told not to use it, but in JavaScript, it's used a lot to make uh, uh, some expressions compact. And that depending on the Boolean value logged in user, will return one component or another component. So actually, we have JSX inside JavaScript, inside JSX, inside JavaScript. Okay, get used to that. And every time we open a tag, an Angular tag, we are entering a JavaScript, a JSX syntax, and every time we open a brace, we are nesting a JavaScript expression context. At the end of the day, it's all JavaScript. Okay? We are just creating an object, and we are setting some property of an object using an expression. And this expression will return this object or that other object. What changes is only the syntax for creating the object. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, apart from the first Five minutes, uh, it will be all familiar. Uh, there is a, there are some strange details. If some part of an expression is undefined or null, or true, or false, JSX will drop it, will not render it. Okay, I could understand it easily for undefined and null, but why are you killing booleans? This is helpful because we can use, uh, for example, shorthand notations to decide whether we want to render or not some part of the page. So according to maybe this expression, if user level is not equal to admin, this whole expression will be false. And so nothing will be rendered. All this part will be dropped from the component tree. If 
this condition is true, then the uh, value of the expression will be the second field, of course, the result of this function. So it will, re it will render something according to this, comp this menu uh, that we are creating. So just remember, uh, if we are, uh, if we want, many many times we are using the end and or operator just to suppress part of the page according to a boolean value. And if the result of the expression is true or false instead of an object, then nothing is displayed. So you will never see the true or false uh, uh, say text uh, into the page. And the same goes for null or undefined. So they're not you're not you're not getting any undefined error or something like that. They are some silently dropped. Uh, on the page hmm? and uh, it's useful because you have you will have we will have a lot of conditional rendering in the page so the render component will depend on a lot of factors uh, the children from the syntax point of view are different from the properties because the properties are in the body of, of the tag and the children are inside the opening and closing tag but from the point of view the component they are the same type. We only have one property inside props, like we have in this case uh, uh, the headline property, for example. We may also have uh, the children property. Children is automatically populated with the content of the tag. This content usually is an object. It's a JSX object that contains other children and other properties and so on. In some cases, it may be a string, but normally, it's a React element. So we can use the children inside our component. This is good for wrapping components around the, um, with, with external, uh, the wrapping some code with an external, let's say, uh, container or something like that. It's not very used. Uh, Boolean values are also, uh, in, in HTML, there are some for example, in forms especially, there are some attributes that have an effect depending on whether they are present or not. So, for example, in a checkbox, you have the checked attribute. You may put it and it will become checked, and you might remove the attribute and the checkbox will be deselected, and so on. Um, so, they don't have really a value, they just have a meaning whether they are present or not. This doesn't fit actually the, the JSX model, where all the attributes. Uh, must have a value uh, and so we tend to use explicitly a boolean value true or false so disable equal to false is equivalent to in a, in a, the, the to the absence of this tag of the attribute in the html code disable equal to true is equivalent to the presence of this tag there's a small shortcut that in the recent version of React, if you write the attribute without giving a value, the default value will be true. So we can have the attribute without saying nothing, and uh, it will get the value true. But uh, just remember that we all always have a value, whether it's true or false. It's not just present or absent. So this is a, a, a slight difference if you, are, if, you are, if you are translating some code that we think in HTML, into JSX, the uh, presence of or, or absent attributes should be translated into Boolean attributes. A uh, strange thing in JSX is that there are no com comments. There is no comment syntax in JSX. Uh, usually, if you want to add a comment, uh, use, uh, uh, you must enter JavaScript and then use the JavaScript comment uh, syntax. Hmm? Or write the comments in the line above or below because it's there's already too much stuff uh, say compacted in one line usually when you're using JSX. Uh, for the rest uh, the the react components uh, rep replicate uh, let me say in the way uh, there is a library of components uh, that replicate the real html component so when we are inserting a div like we did before or an h1 or a button up to now, I just told you I'm inserting an HTML, an HTML element or a DOM element. They are not exactly the same. They are React elements that mimic as close as possible the real DOM element because we never want, we never work with the real DOM. Okay, it's too slow. Uh, 
Uh, and so also the names of the attributes sometimes are slightly different, or the name of the properties sometimes are slightly different. For example, a lot of uh, properties uh, maybe in HTML have a long name in uh, yes, have a long name in the name in the in the DOM, while in JSX uh, they tend to uh, use the camel case uh, notation. So it's just a lowercase c becomes uh, uppercase c, for example. So just a little different. Or there are some properties that have a dash inside. This is, for example, a DOM property of an object that sets the CSS box model pro uh, margin property. And it's translated into camel case also because the dash is not a valid character in JavaScript uh, object keys. Hmm? Another detail, if we want to use an object as a property, we need to double the braces because the first brace, the, the red ones, uh, are for entering the JavaScript mode. And then if we want to, to pass an object, we must create the object with another pair of braces. Okay, so we are here in, in JSX syntax. We want to pass a, an attribute style that is represented in form of an object. So we use an expression, JavaScript expression, red braces. And the value of this JavaScript, JavaScript expression must be an object, a JavaScript object. And so we use the braces to, for constructing the blue braces for constructing the object. Okay. Um, and for example, the style attribute that in uh, HTML is a string, in JSX is an object. So instead of compacting to a string all the styles of an element, you create an object by separating all the different properties. Huh? It's all the different CSS properties. And it's much easier, much nicer to manage. So actually we have, as we mentioned at the beginning, we have a higher level of, of abstraction of how the uh, DOM is working. We are working with a simpler and more clever DOM. Hmm? A more regular structure. Okay, I will skip all the details, all the details about the, the, the syntax. We'll, we'll see them when we're using them. Um, okay, another detail is that there are some attributes uh, that in CSS are uh, correspond to uh, reserved, uh, reserved words uh, in, uh, um, in, in JavaScript. For example, the class. Huh? In HTML, we have used the class for defining the CSS classes, but class is a keyword in JavaScript, so it cannot be used. In this case, we use class name. And also for which is attributing uh, HTML for mapping the label of a, uh, of a form element to the actual input element. Uh, for, again, is a keyword in JavaScript, so in this case, it's translated into HTML4. So there are these little differences when we are writing uh, JSS code uh, that make it a bit different uh, from the corresponding HTML code. But for the rest, uh, it's very similar. One difference, though, is uh, when we are creating more complex components. Uh, OK, but now we already know how to declare a component. Uh, I only wanted to come to remember the rules. Uh, component uh, receives a props argument uh, and must return an element tree in React. And in our cases, 99% of the cases, uh, we are returning a JSX expression that will represent a React element. Uh, the function should be pure with no side effect. It then potent means that if I'm calling the function three times, I will get always the same result. For escaping the pure function with impotent pro uh, properties, we'll see next week uh, how to manage the state uh, and the evolution of the state uh, through a separate mechanism. Okay? It's called hooks because actually it's hooked into a basic uh, clean functional structure by giving you some escape points. It's OK to create a lot of little components so that can be combined in a much finer way, in a much uh, uh, more flexible way. Uh, so we use a lot of composition uh, as, a, as, a, um, as a design uh, uh, pattern. A component made of other components. We will see that uh, in the future, we learn about components that don't create any HTML but modify the behavior or the data flow of other components. So 
uh, components are not just for rendering HTML, but are also for adding functionalities uh, to, the, to their children hmm? in some way. In a way, there are functions that do something. They, uh, so this function could be used to enrich the HTML of the page or to enrich the functionality available to, the, to their children. And uh, if you see that the component becomes too complex, uh, feel free to break it down to two different children and design them separately. Huh? The, the philosophy of React is quite of uh, deconstructing. These are very powerful, but also uh, not dangerous, but we need to be careful uh, uh, feature in JSX and in the definition of the, um, the in the rendering of the component, uh, which uh, implies the use it or let's say comes out whenever we want uh, to have a list uh, of elements um, for example in our code uh, we had uh, three buttons okay and we just put three times the same element actually this is a list three components in many cases, when you are generating a list of items, they are coming from an array. We are not just replicating with cut and paste. Okay? So we would need to expand the array into a list of components, a sequence of components. This can be done. And in any point in JSX expression, in any, in any point where we, ex we are expecting one component, we can insert a list of components. And this can be simply an array of elements. Array in the sense of a JavaScript array. So the array will be automatically expanded. If you are here, we are inserting an, an array. Of course, we need the braces because the array is a concept in JavaScript code as a JavaScript expression. We are inserting a JavaScript expression of type array. The elements of the array will be expanded automatically. Uh, so for example, we have here some numbers, a list of numbers. So uh, the application uh, creates a list of numbers and calls a component, a return, a renders a component called number list with this property. So the numbers property will be an array. We, in the rendering of the component, uh, we are taking this array, property of numbers, we are extracting the array, and we are using the map method for creating a new array whose elements are these sub-expressions, these JSX expressions. So for every number, we create a small expression li number slash li, because we want to put into them into a list. So we are creating this list items that is a new array, and the content of this array are React elements, JSX expressions, computed like this. And we are returning the final UL, the list container that contains this list. So we are, you see here, we, are, we have an HTML tag that contains an array. This array, of course, contains JSX expressions. Okay, this is perfectly fine. We don't need to expand this uh, array into its uh, components. Okay? So uh, the rule here is that uh, if we are doing this, so whenever we are including into a, um, a JSX expression a list of JSX elements, the element themselves must have an additional attribute, which is called the key. It's a requirement. This key attribute should be added, for example, to this list item here. So the uh, so I don't have the uh, in this way. So we must have whenever we are creating a list of JSX elements, the elements in the list must have a key attribute, and this key attribute must be unique. Unique in the list, not in the page, not in the application, in the list. Usually, uh, these keys are in some way extracted from the content, or maybe if you are getting from a database, you have a unique ID already available, so you can use that. 
Um, why is that? It's for optimization purposes. Uh, when, uh, uh, since we have a list of uh, maybe a thousand elements, imagine that in the application at a given point, you are deleting the fourth one. You're deleting one from a long list of elements. So, in this case, React will have the previous version of the component when we have 1,000 elements, and the second version when React knows that there are 999 elements only. So there's a difference there in the list. And so the React optimization, or React uh, difference checking algorithm should compute the minimum amount of changes from a list of 1,000 to a list of 1,000 uh, minus 1 elements. But it doesn't have any clue of what you deleted. It should compare one by one all the thousand elements and find, OK, it's easier if I delete the fourth one and uh, I, uh, I just move up, move up all the others. But if it doesn't get it right, uh, it will understand that the number four, number one is, is identical. I don't need to do anything. Number two is identical. I don't need to do anything. Number four is different. OK, and change the content of number four. Number five is different. OK, I need to change the content on number five. And so on until number 1,000 is missing. So I will delete this node. So the clever way would be to delete number four. The dumb way would be to change all the elements and delete the last one. How can we help React understand which is the clever way? By providing keys. A key identifies uniquely a given piece of value, an element with some specific value that has a meaning for us. And so the first thing that React will try to do is to check in the keys. So if, if there are all the keys from 1 to 1,000, and the other case, the number 4 is missing, that's the difference. Remember, React doesn't know what we changed. We are regenerating another component, and only after the generation of the component, uh, React will find search for the differences. So in normal cases, it will be more than able to find the best uh, the points of the differences. But when we have lists, uh, we don't want to risk uh, you know, the React to do extra work, uh, and so we must help it uh, in a way, or deleting the right component. I describe this as a you know, help uh, inefficiency. Uh, there's also another aspect uh, we, that today we are not able to grasp uh, is if these components contain some state, remember some information. So deleting a wrong one would mean changing the state of the application in a wrong way. Uh, for example, the state is selected or not selected. So you're deleting a row and then you are shifting the selected state from one component to another, or assigned to a different component. So it's important, since the, it, React only sees a list of identical components, uh, to help him distinguish them, and so we'll be able to manage it. So if we forget uh, about this key attribute, uh, we will get a warning. Take this warning seriously. OK, so that's why I always want to have the, the console open on my right uh, and see if there are some key errors. It's, a very, it's trivial to correct. Usually we just you know, forget to put it in because it's information that we already have, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, essential. Usually this comes uh, with a map. In many cases, when you are constructing a GSS component from some data value, we are using map. So map key. Just try to bind them into your mind, and you will get 90% of the cases uh, right. A final detail, I think, this, yeah, this is one, and then we move to the exercise about React is uh, uh, if we want to return a part of the page uh, which is uh, which has more than one uh, node. Remember, at the beginning, we had a, 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 a H1 component and then a button, and we said, okay, there's a syntax error here. We need to wrap all of them into a div because we only need to return one component. OK, in that case, the div didn't do any harm. 
and so it was fine. But it's an extra component that really it isn't needed. So there is a special component in React, which is called fragment, that will be uh, can be used as a div to contain other elements, but uh, in rendering to the final DOM, it will be ignored. Okay, so when we need to put together a set of components into one, one single tree, but the, the root of this tree doesn't have any meaning, we can use the, this special React fragment component that has a very nice uh, shortcut syntax, which is this one, in the empty tag. So this empty tag is totally equivalent to writing react.fragment, but it's nicer to see, and it's even more explicit. So for grouping together different nodes, uh, we can use this kind of syntax, uh, and, uh, and it doesn't create any extra node or any extra component in the final tree. Okay, so these are a bit of rules, uh, but no, they are not complex. We just need to get used to those. Yes? Uh, so uh, the question is whether the React function are synchronous or asynchronous. Uh, are, they are uh, scheduled to be executed by the React scheduler in, in an asynchronous way. Uh, right now, we only have one rendering at the beginning. Okay, right now we are loading the, the application and we are rendering it from, from top to bottom. And stop because we don't have any event handlers. Um, later on next week when we add event handler and state management, uh, we'll see that uh, there are some operations that will be scheduled and then React will call the functions after an event occurred. So they will be ex called in the context of, the, uh, of, an, ex of an asynchronous event. Okay. But as always, like with, uh, um, with, with JavaScript, uh, the function body is executed synchronously, from top to bottom. It will never be in, in, uh, in, uh, interrupted in the middle. OK? You're welcome. OK, so with this, uh, let's try to uh, adapt into the React uh, framework uh, our example with the scores. Uh, so during the break, I already created a uh, project called exams. And in this exams project, uh, I just copied, with a bit of modification, the exam.js from, from last week. OK, that contained also, you remember this function that we wrote the first day, uh, for creating an, an exam object and an exam list object. I did only a very uh, little modification. One was uh, importing DJS with the import syntax instead of the required syntax. So in the beginning, with Node, we used require. Last week, uh, in HTML, we needed to use a script tag for loading the library. Right now, we are in React. Uh, we use normally the import uh, statement. Uh, and I must remember, sorry, to also imp download uh, install npm install HTS uh, in the project. So th that was the first modification. Then we have the functions. And then I expo I'm exporting these functions in the module. So that wh whoever uh, wants to import this module may access these two names. So I have two names to export uh, that are two different functions. So I, don't, I cannot have a, a default export that only exports one name and exporting a list of names. So I'm creating, in this exam.js file, a module from which I can import from other modules the names of these two functions. But the functions are the same. I didn't change anything in the JavaScript of the functions themselves. And this was the first, uh, uh, the only modification that I did, uh, or the first modification that I did to the project. Now, let's try to. Uh, I, the application is always the, 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 the empty application with the logo. Uh, we should plan how to structure it uh, in components. So what we want to achieve is similar to last week. So a table with some uh, rows corresponding to the different exams. 
So we may have the main page, which is the app, a title, and a table. The table is made of a heading of the table, and then some rows with the real content. And then we have the button for deleting, adding, editing, and something like that around the table. All of these concepts can be realized as different components. So let me just uh, try to draw a map. We have the app. The app should contain uh, a, title a title part and then a table. Maybe we call it exam table. The exam table should contain the heading, table heading, and the table body. And the table body is composed of many table rows. So, table, so let's call it uh, exam heading. Exam. No, sorry. Table body yeah. and uh, uh, exam row. Many times. Hmm? And times uh, exam row. And this is the content of, uh, of our application. Each row should contain the exam data and some actions. The buttons for deleting, editing, and something like that. And if we want, we may also have a table footer that contains the insert action. Now, in the bottom, we have a form we work on next week for inserting new data. So this is the logic. I, I'm sorry, the the, you know, the the pen doesn't work on this classroom. Uh, so I, I otherwise I could have uh, drawn uh, that in pictures. But imagine those as nested boxes. So we first need to clarify ourselves about the logical structure of the page. Or the application. Right now, the application is just a simple, very simple, stupid page. And understood, so this should be the structure. Some of these can be, so this is the component, uh, the, the, the element tree. We could have all these element tree generated by one component, by app, that generates everything. Or we could split the responsibility across different components. So probably I wouldn't have a component just for generating the table heading. It's just some fixed text. I probably would have a component just for generating the title. So I could do that in line into the app. No. But uh, for sure, I would have to have a component for generating one row. Because this component is needed many times. And maybe I would split uh, this component into two separate uh, components, one just for showing the data and the other for showing the controls, the actions. Because maybe I need to show the data in other contexts, in other tables. And so it's better to have a component that just is focused on showing the data because in another context, the, the action should be different. So I can separate them. Oh. Exam data is not, if I, if I want to go into more detail, is a list of TD. Three cells, name, uh, what uh, credits and date, or three or four, uh, I don't remember. Depends on how many details we want to write. And this is one table data with, uh, with inside uh, one button. It's nothing special. Or a link, depends on how we want to render it. Of course, we, okay. I, I, don't, I don't need to go down to the HTML level for everything, okay? Once a component is clear, I can go to the implementation. But at least I should have a, a clear structure in mind and say, okay, which are my components? Of course, app is a component. Uh, exam table should be a component in my mind. Exam row. Exam data and exam actions should be components. 
So I'm thinking of an application with one, two, three, four, five components. Hmm? I'm omitting other components like the row and column for Bootstrap. I will put there where they're needed. I'm just focusing on the log on the logical dependency of the application. Okay. Then every component will use other subcomponents to manage the layout, manage the styles, and whatever. Of course, it's part of the inner design of the component. So let's first draw the components and then we can fill them with data. Um, so up. If we want to use uh, Bootstrap, uh, we, we, uh, we need also in this project to install Bootstrap. And we have Bootstrap. The difficult part is writing it. And then remember in the app.js to put the import of the CSS files which is always here in getting started, this one. I can remove all the other stuff here and there. OK. So we have the empty app where we can return our application that if we are working in a React Bootstrap, We have the container with only one end. And the first time I remember I should import container from the bootstrap. Uh, we like like before, we have one row. One column, full white com uh, com column with the title. Uh, the, the convention is that uh, user defined components are start with a capital letter and HTML predefined node start with a lowercase letter. Uh, H1 uh, might cost. And then the second row, we contain the table, row, a component that we call the uh, a title is there, an XM table component. So we don't want to column. Right now in the app to create the table with all the details, we just call an XM table component. We have no values. So we are designing our application to use a component here. And then the design of the table will be inside that component. We only know that we have a, a title and an exam table inside. So we can design exam table. I create another file. I call it exam table so JS, and I define inside a function exam table, and I remember to export this function exam table so that it can be imported from the app. So if I go there. Control space, you should be able to find the import statement. Like this. So, this is already a valid uh, application that will render only the title because exam table right now is an empty component. So, if I want, I can also start it. And it should okay. 
Okay, let's wait a bit because it needs to recompile everything. Okay, we have a title and nothing more. The component tree contains the app, contains a row column, and contains exam table, which right now is rendered to blank. Now we can implement exam table. In our plan, exam table is made of uh, some heading and somebody, and it needs to use an exam row component inside for generating each row. So uh, we just return. This is a table. Let's have a look if uh, CSS Bootstrap gives me a table component. Components, table. Yeah, table with a capital T and some attribute that they can add. Table stripe, for example. And then inside, I need to use, oh, sorry. Inside, I just need to use the normal um, HTML tags. So I can return a table stripe. Which is a shortcut for stripe equal to true. Okay, we, we may omit it in recent version of of, um, of React. Table should be imported, so usually a control space should be able to find it. That is defined in React Bootstrap. And uh, uh, so I'm importing table from React Bootstrap. I don't need to import the CSS anymore. It's already in the application. Only the component that I need. And I have a table heading section with all the, with one row with some headings, which was the name, if I remember correctly, the score. The date, sorry, not th, but t, but th, and the date of the exam, or something like that. And a, and a final column for the actions. This is just the first row of my table, right? This is basic HTML. I could have copied from last week. And then I have the table, table body that contains some table rows. But I don't want to create the table rows myself. I will delegate to a component that will create a row corresponding to an exam. So I will have a list of exam rows. Exam row number one, exam row second one, and so on. So I have many exam rows into this body. Now, these are functional components. And if I write three components with an identical call, they will give me identical results. The only way to make these three components to write the data of different exams is to pass different properties to them. So this component should be customized with the parameter, which is the exam object that they want to print. So this will be exam. They should receive one property that may call exam. That is uh, the object. First exam. And the second one would have an exam property as a second one, and so on. Then, of course, the exam row will render the name and the score of the specific exam. But how, the, uh, how does this component exam table know about these exams? It only knows if somebody gave the list of all the exams to this component. 
We already have the exam list object. Okay. But this component doesn't know about it. So in general, I forgot to put a props to this component. I can assume that this component has been given the list of components, a uh, list of exams. By whom? By app. So app, when calling exam table, should give it to exam table all the information it needs for itself and for its children. Exams equal to exam list. My exams. Whatever. So if I pass an object, my exam, to this exam table component, these exams with an S will be available as a property, props.exams, here. And so we can iterate, inspect, remap the list of exams and pass different values to the different exam rows. Right? And how can, the next question is, how can app know about my exams? But there's one question. Sorry. Before. If we don't pass this parameter here, yeah. and we're trying to use it there, we'll get undefined. The, so uh, props.exams will be undefined like any object property when, you, the, when the key is not uh, defined. So what, what happens then depends on how you use this uh, behavior. So one step back, how can I get uh, my exams. At the end of the course, we will be loading this information from a database, which is will be running on a server that we don't have yet. Okay, so this is something that will start in three or four weeks. So for now, we just want to fake it. So I created a very small piece of code. That I put it here. Let's write it called load data. I copied some code from last week. And this load data JavaScript is just uh, uh, creating an object with a new exam list uh, and with a couple of add statements uh, is creating the exam list. It's not real data, it's just fake data that we that we feed into our application. So this should not be here, really. No, it should not be part of the real application. This is just the, the test program that we wrote in the first uh, weeks. We create an exam list and we put some information into that. I just uh, copied these four lines and put into a function load data inside a module. Module that needs to import, uh, of course, uh, sorry. Exam and exam list from exam.js that we copied before and export this function load data. So, since we have this trick, I could do a very simple operation inside my application of uh, creating, loading this information by hand. And it would be um, Okay, I can use it also. I, I, of course, in some at some point, I, mu I must break the general structure of being totally pure. Okay, uh, so I just define a const uh, variable uh, my exams uh, or exam list equal to the result of load data from this module. So I'm a bit cheating because now app will be using a global variable from its context. We know it's, it's not forever, but <laughs> we need to do something. So right here, what do we have? Uh, an exam list like we had the other weeks. Just defined locally in the code, 
right now we can start all the process my exam would be exam list uh, my sorry exam list so i'm passing an object which is an exam list object as a parameter called as a property called exams to the exam table We know it's a copy of a static values, but the component doesn't know. If we go into exam table, exam table right now in its properties has all the information it needs. It has the exam, the list of exams can be extracted from props dot exams this is the object and this object had a property that was called exam list if i don't remember exam yeah this dot exam list i don't have uh, the method for accessing that let me just read the property this is a j a js a js array with the exam object Okay, so this table is able to access this information, and we, it should generate one new row for each element of this list. So we should transform the list of exam objects into a list of uh, exam row components. Is doing that. I'm taking so the table body would be computed by taking the list of exams, list of exams, which is an array of exam objects, and mapping it with a map statement into a list of exam rows. So each element should be a single exam. Exam with OBS, sorry. And I will map it into an exam row with the parameter exam equal to exam. So this does the work for me. There's a lot going on in this row. I have a list of exams. I'm calling the map function. I remember the map callback takes a single element and returns the new element of the array to be created. The new element will be an exam row. So I'm using JSX to, uh, to represent the type of objects that they want to return. And it takes one parameter, exam. The value of this parameter will be the value of the exam argument, the callback function. Okay, this exam here is this one. And we also learned that when we are returning into JSX a list of elements, an array of objects, we should add the key attribute. And we have a unique value associated to each exam. Yes, we have the code. If we don't put the key, try later on, we can, you can try to delete it. You will see a warning okay, in the console. So we are in JSX. We open a JavaScript code for mapping. The, the value that we are mapping on to will be a JSX expression, so a, a React element. And for setting the parameters, and in some cases also the children, we again enter into JavaScript to pick the values. That's it. Now the work is in the hands of the exam row component. So we can create another file. 
that we can make all x and rho. Let's say yes. We may define a function x and rho. Props. And this component now has access to a single the, to the information about the single exam in this props.exam parameter. So in this case, we know we should return a row of elements. So I should simply return it's a very simple component. It returns a row that includes some exam data, whose exam is a props.exam. And then a final cell with the exam action. I'm not sure whether exam action needs uh, to know the exam, but just to be on the safe side, I can add it. And exam data, I put it into the same file just for exam data is actually a component that should return a sequence of three table cells. So it returns a sequence of a TD, 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 but they need a, a common parent to be returned. So it can be an empty, an empty fragment. So the TR is already generated by XM row. I only need to generate a sequence of three TD But they I cannot return a list here. I don't want to return a list. I only return a component with three children. And so we use the empty component, the fragment component, with a part of HTML. So TD, the first one is the name of the course. So it's props.exam.name. Then we may add uh, props.exam score. And finally, props exam dot data format. These are the JS objects, so we need to format it. We cannot render objects. We can only render elements or strings or lists of elements. And just for, okay. Uh, and let's write just um, uh, the exam actions. For now, it may also be empty. Just an empty TD for the moment. And from this file, I only need to export uh, the exam row. Because I decide to put everything to a file, then you can reorganize as you want. And from the exam table, and now I can import exam row. So we are switching across different files. I'm sorry, but so if we are lucky, the application was running. XM row in terminated uh, line 12 in XM row. Then I have an, an, an error. Yeah, because I didn't close the brace. And somewhere. I have some errors that I need to check. Property of the exam is undefined in uh, Exam table line six cross dot exam exam row is called from exam table. Sorry, 
Propt exams is undefined. Okay, exam table, Propt exams here is undefined, so it's the fault is uh, of up. Why is it undefined? Exams equal to exam table. Exams. Uh, what did they do wrong? Let me just check. Okay, so this is there. Okay, it works. I don't I have some errors. Oh yes. Okay, so I still have some warnings to sort out. Uh, basically, I have this error that uh, um, it's exam, exams uh, is not defined. It's probably of, of the because you are defining uh, some data and uh, before um, after the components are being loaded. L let me sort them out uh, afterwards, and I will correct it. Uh, but this is the result that we get. Later on, I will debug these errors. We see from the component tree uh, that we have this uh, exam table that contains three exam rows. Each exam row received an object, an object of type exam with all the properties of the exam. And it's using that for calling exam data that receives a copy of this property Again, with the same information of the exam, and they will degenerate with these, these three tables, these three table elements. Okay, so we have the same final HTML had we had, we have, had, as we had uh, last week. The difference is now that we are generating it by small pieces and put the only pieces together. And each component uh, receives a copy of the information that it needs uh, to generate each part of the page. Okay. So the first uh, step would be always to think about how to structure the page, how to break it down to components, and then we ask ourselves, which, what information does every component need to be able to do its job? And we work with properties in order to get this information up down to that component, crossing all the intermediate ones. Okay, so we'll have weeks uh, to work on this model. Today, I wanted just to, you, to show you the big picture, and then, of course, we'll learn to, how to manage it better. First, I have to debug the errors, but I will do that in my, in my free time today. Hmm? I will uh, commit this when I corrected the errors, and I will write you almost like which was the cause of the errors so that uh, we can understand it better. Hmm? Okay, so sorry for being at the last minute, and uh, thank you for today. <laughs>